The protagonist of the movie is an obese, old-fashioned, and carefree man named Dusty. All he cares about is eating and watching vintage movies. With the advancements in technology, the world has moved on, but Dusty is still stuck in the 80s. He doesn't like using smartphones, thinks texting is a waste of time, and even believes that emojis are strange. Come on, Dusty, even the grapefruit? The one thing he fears is millennials. He can't stand teenagers who have contrasting opinions to his. At the start of the movie, Dusty is in the car, munching on a burger and listening to some 80s rock. Despite being 50 years old, he is carefree and doesn't have a full-time job. This habit has caused Dusty to lose all his friends, but he could care less about it. Soon, a bunch of millennials catch him in the act and take videos of him. Dusty is obviously uncomfortable, but due to his super awkward nature, he can't say a word to them. After a while, his niece Chloe joins him in his car, and the two proceed to a movie theater. It turns out that they have been watching movies together since Chloe was young, and this tradition is being continued today. The two appear to be close, but with the contrasting differences in age, age and habits, it's clear that Chloe is a bit weirded out by her uncle. This becomes even more evident when Dusty plays an old song, which she calls boring. Get out of the car, Chloe. On reaching a theater called Cinethrax, the uncle-niece duo starts debating on what movie to watch. Dusty wants to go with a vintage 80s movie, which he has already seen 10 times, but Chloe wants to watch a Cinethrax exclusive 3D movie called Chosen, and eventually the stubborn niece gets her way. They then head to the ticket line, where a lot of millennials are clicking selfies and texting. As expected, Uncle Dusty is disgusted by the sight. And to make matters worse, he doesn't even have the money to purchase the movie tickets because they are that expensive. This is part of modern living that Uncle Dusty can't run away from. Hence, Chloe reluctantly coughs up some cash. Strangely, all the Cinethrax employees, including the ticket seller and the bouncers, have a weird and gloomy look on their faces. Sounds normal to me. Before entering the main theater, Uncle Dusty checks his 3D glasses into the bin and brings out his own bulky glasses, which he calls shifters. Apparently, he hates 3D movies so much that he has brought these shifters to flatline them into normal 2D movies. He has even brought a pair for his niece Chloe, but as expected, the latter doesn't want to wear them. After this, Dusty heads to the canteen to buy some popcorn. There, some millennials gang up on him and inquire if he has accidentally ended up in the 3D section. Dusty simply says that he is a movie freak and leaves. Weird flex, but okay. When he enters the main theater, he finds the manager of Cinethrax, a good-looking guy named Zack, flirting with Chloe. However, as soon as Dusty approaches them, Zack makes an excuse and leaves. However, at the same time, two of Chloe's friends arrive and sit next to her. It turns out this was her plan all along. The movie time with her uncle was just an excuse to get out of the house. Dusty is annoyed that Chloe's not spending time with him, and also because her friends have taken his seat. He tries convincing her to sit with him, but Chloe doesn't want to. She has started seeing her uncle as a boring person who will embarrass her in front of her friends every chance he gets. Hearing this, Dusty becomes sad, but still, he decides to sit right behind behind Chloe's seat. Soon, Zack gets on stage and announces that the movie is about to begin. He lays out the rules that no one is allowed to use their phones, and that everyone has to put their Cinethrax 3D glasses on. The millennials are pumped up with the announcement, and they start cheering in excitement. Then, the movie Chosen finally begins. It is a love story, with some pretty weird acting and storylines, but nonetheless, because of the ultra-realistic 3D action, the millennials are loving it. They scream and cheer at literally every bit of dialogue. However, Uncle Dusty, who is not wearing any glasses, is left disappointed with the movie. He can't wait to go home already. Shortly after, he remembers his shifter glasses and decides to put them on. However, because they flatline the 3D into a boring 2D version, Dusty is still not intrigued. So, he decides to annoy the other people around. He sees one of Chloe's friends texting and reminds her that using the phone is not allowed in the theater. In fact, he causes a minor ruckus, which doesn't sit well with the other millennials there. At last, when Dusty still refuses to back down, Chloe tells her friend to stop using the phone so that they can watch the movie in peace. Dusty believes that he is one, completely oblivious that he's embarrassing his niece in front of her cool friends. As the movie goes on, Dusty gets more and more bored. In one scene, he notices something very unusual, as if the screen is faulty. However, when he takes off his shifter glasses, there is nothing. Confused, Dusty wants to try on the Cinethrax glasses to see what the real movie experience is like. He asks Chloe to lend her his glasses for a while, but by this time, she is fed up with her uncle's child childish antics, she bluntly berates him for embarrassing her in front of her friends and requests him to act normally. Left with no options, Uncle Dusty puts on his shifter glasses and continues watching the movie. Suddenly, he notices a giant worm-like creature peering through the screen. All the millennials in the theater are completely oblivious to the worm's presence, but Dusty can see it clearly. 
Terrified, he quickly takes off his glasses, and with this, the worm disappears. A few minutes pass by, but the worm is nowhere to be seen. So, Dusty suspects that it has something to do with his 2D glasses. Hence, he puts them back on, and as soon as he does, the giant worm attacks him with its suckers. Dusty screams in horror and causes chaos inside the theater. He also drops his popcorn all over Chloe and her friends. Enraged, the millennials start calling him names, but Dusty is sure that there is something unusual going on inside the theater. He tries explaining it to Chloe, but as expected, she is having none of it. Instead, she is embarrassed and expresses her regrets about him being there. The commotion soon attracts the Cinethrax manager, Zack, who approaches Dusty and takes him away, much to the delight of the other millennials. Get yeah, that boomer out of here! <laughs> yeah, old people suck. Worried that her uncle has gotten himself into trouble, Chloe also follows. Outside, Dusty tries to explain that something came out of the screen and approached him, but Zack concludes that the old man is simply mistaking the ultra-realistic 3D action for a real thing. However, Dusty is sure that he saw a worm-like creature. At last, he decides to get a refund and leave the place, but to his surprise, Chloe doesn't want to go. Instead, she chastises her uncle for embarrassing her several times, just so that he can become the center of attraction. Saying this, she leaves him and goes back inside the theater. Dusty tries going after her, but Zack stops him, saying he's not allowed to go in there anymore. Left with no choice, a devastated Uncle Dusty decides to wait for Chloe till the movie ends. But since he cannot wait in the main hall, Zack takes him to the projection room. There, Zack and his employees start talking about how Cinethrax will take over the world because of its super realistic cinematics and visuals. The age of old 2D movies is gone, and now 3D has taken over. James Cameron is that you? They also ask Dusty to give it a try, and if he still doesn't like it, they will refund his money. Zack then hands Dusty a pair of Cinethrax glasses, but after a long thought, the latter rejects it. Because of this, the Cinethrax employees become enraged and suddenly turn into possessed, zombie-like beings. They then attack Dusty and almost succeed in driving him into a sharp object, but somehow, the uncle manages to escape from their clutches. How did he do it? He simply took a rotten burger out of his pocket and shoved it into the possessed zombies. Dusty then runs to the main hall and tries finding a way out of the building. However, it is impossible, as all the Cinethrax employees have turned into zombies and are on the lookout for him. So, Dusty sneaks inside the storeroom and braces himself to do the one thing which he hates the most, texting. He sends several messages to Chloe, where he apologizes for being a jerk and also admits that he is scared of losing her. Then, he proceeds to warn her of the impending danger, but before he can do so, Zack and the others break in through the door and take him away. Meanwhile, Chloe has started feeling bad for scolding her uncle earlier. She waits for his next message, but it doesn't come. Hence, when she finds his shifter glasses lying on the floor, she picks them up and tries them on. Lo and behold, she notices a giant tentacled creature, which has now taken over the entire screen. The creature is also sucking the life out of all the other millennials, meaning that Chloe is the only uninfected human left in the theater. Terrified, she takes off her glasses and tries running, but all the infected millennials start following her. A major struggle ensues, and it appears as if all hope is lost, but fortunately, with with the help of a prop sword, Chloe manages to swat the hundreds of infected millennials before entering the projection room. There, she notices her uncle bound and tied to a chair, and finally realizes that he was telling the truth. Either that, or he's into some kinky stuff. However, before she could help him, Zack and the others arrive and apprehend her. Following this, Zack reveals the main creature behind all this mayhem. It turns out to be an alien, which has traveled from another galaxy to extend its species. Zack mentions that being infected was the best thing to ever happen to him, as now he doesn't feel any pain or anxiety. He also encourages the uncle-niece duo to embrace the change, as the alien only wants to help them overcome their miserable and boring lives. Saying this, he forcefully puts on a pair of Cinethrax 3D glasses to Dusty and makes him watch the movie. This will apparently turn him into one of them. But fortunately, Chloe intervenes in the nick of time and stabs the alien with a broken piece of glass. This momentarily stuns the infected zombies, allowing Chloe to untie her uncle from his bondage. Unfortunately, because they are about to escape, Zack releases a tentacle from his mouth, which grabs Chloe and starts possessing her. And in no time, her face starts turning, implying that the alien has entered her body. Just then, Uncle Dusty grabs an axe and chops off Zack's head like an 80s hero, but by this time, the damage has already been done. Soon, the two reach the exit door, and when Dusty opens it, he sees that the city outside has been ravaged by a colossal alien. Here, he finally realizes that the world has been taken over by aliens. At the same at the same time, Chloe also changes her demeanor. She tells her uncle to embrace the change and accept the fact that there is no escaping. She then mentions that Zack was right. There is no pain or anxiety in this life. Soon, the other millennials and Cinethrax employees
employees also arrive and start persuading him to accept the change. They even sing a song to help Dusty change his mind. I'll take you to the candy shop. At last, realizing that there is no hope, Dusty finally gives in and starts singing along to the song. I'll let you lick the lollipop. In the last scene, all the people get back inside the theater, where the same movie is being played. Chloe, who is now completely possessed, gives her uncle a pair of the Cinethrax glasses so that he can embrace the change and become one of them. The movie ends as Dusty anxiously waits for the alien to arrive and possess him. Keep going till you hit the spot, oh! Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.